hello friends uh, this is suresh and today we are going to discuss about distributed training distributed tensor flow using harvard so this is series of uh, how to do distributed training using harvard and so just uh, uh, this tutorial we, we will start from part 1 so uh, what we will cover here we will cover here introduction to distributed deep learning and type of parallelism so that major two uh, things we are going to discuss here so first uh, introduction to distributed deep learning so deep learning uh, here you we are uh, a lot of time deep learning there are covered two things first is uh, we have to go deeper another plus we have large data set so we have to go deeper and we have large data set and there need to uh, compute the billion million of parameters so how can we do that with a particular GPU like for example you have multiple uh, uh, distributed uh, platform then how you how you will do for the training so the main idea behind this the computing paradigm is to run task in parallel in state in state of the serially it would happen in single machine yeah multi node machine yeah uh, so next slide I uh, will go uh, parallel computing platform so what is the parallel pl computing platform here uh, for example we have to train our model uh, with multiple workers multiple nodes then, then people are using for high performance computing clusters yeah multi cluster yeah multi node gpus they yeah, set up the gpu so people are using that so this kind of the platform required for the computing computation purpose like supercomputer like that but yeah uh, gpu right now popular so much popular especially for the deep learning yeah so before the going to the deep learning before going to the deep learning distributed computing distributed training we have to discuss about why need for distributed training why need distributing computation so the first major like we have to speed up our training we have we want for example you want to train the imagenet data set so in imagenet a particular one gpu you need one week two week for the training so how you can uh, do fast and speed up your training then you need uh, multiple GPU head needs some distributed computations so such that this is the first matrix like speed up another like efficiency for example we have multi-core CPU we have uh, multi-node GPU or other workers then how we can speed up our uh, efficiency with uh, we can utilize our core our resources so that's the efficiency word will come here another terms like scalability so scalability is uh, like how efficiency uh, if we how uh, we can scale with the multiple gpu and cpu with horizontal yeah vertical so scaling so such kind of thin things and another major factor if you do the that's called accuracy uh if we need better accuracy we need good accuracy for uh, whatever we are training our deep learning model for example you want to classify cat and dog and like multi-class model you want to detect any object the yeah, person particular image so you need to good accuracy uh, you need that then how you can do that so for example you need to multiple uh, model for ensemble learnings without any distributed training uh, you can't uh, 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 you can't do much more experiment whatever is required so you can do um, many experiments with the distributed component with limited times so, so you, you can get better experiment with better results so that's required uh, yeah so this kind of performance matrix is there yeah so uh, we discuss the why need distributed computing now we discuss about the type of the parallelism in parallelism perspective of the deep learning like we can say first like model parallelism and another is a data parallelism so uh, data parallelism in perspective of we have large amount of data in tb gb whatever amount of we have then we train the you the data using the multi node machines like machine one machine two machine three machine four machine like that and uh, then we pass like for example we have 32 size of batch image then we can pass eight image here eight image here eight image here eight image here total size of batch is 32 so it will be pass and we calculate the gradient and update that so that kind of the parallelism we, we are distributed to training according to the data that called data parallelism another called the model parallelism in model parallelism is generally used where we have large uh, like large size of the data and unable to load particular model in particular 
GPU. So we can't load one model in particular GPU. But we need some, some we need model parallelism here. For example, thousand layer is there in particular model. Then you can run hard hundred layer in one GPU, 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 and so on. And that so that is called the model parallelism. So model parallelism generally use uh, that use case I discussed here. Another yeah another so one by one we are going to discuss about data uh, so first i am going to discuss about the data parallelism in data parallelism for example we have f uh, uh, this we have the data set of image for example this is the mini batch and in particular mini batch some block of batch 1 block of batch 2 and block of batch 3 it will go uh, to the particular gp1 this will go gp2 this will gp3 and forward pass then happen backward pass then compute the gradient and then gradient then send to the uh, that is called parameter server so parameter server what will do here parameter server parameter server will do the average of the gradient then update their weight and then send to the updated model to again that node and here same send to the updated particular node and send to the updated model to the particular node so all of the computation will happen gp1 gp2 gp3 and all the uh, gradient sent to the in, in in parameter server and parameter server aggregate the results and average the gradient and update the weights and set back to the updated model so this kind of the uh, parallelism called the data parallelism so this is the uh, good way to parallelize uh, your data to for distributing computing in perspective of the deep learning so if you have large size of the data set and you can run one uh, model in particular CPU. So that is the good for that. Another like uh, model parallelism here. So model parallelism, you pass the data in particular uh, one data set particular uh, GPU and only the block of the layer you uh, block of the layer uh, will run in particular GPU. For example, you have uh, 24 layer of uh, architecture of the CNN then for example you are using um, it 80 layer here 80 layer here 80 layer here like that and so on like you have more replica of the your model so the replica zero for this replica this 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 and you are you, and then compute the compute and everything ready in whatever you have to compute then send it to uh, and here uh, that is the another terms like uh, the parameter server again here we are using the parameter server here so para parameter server uh, will use all of the parameter and aggregate all of the parameter and finally create a full functional uh, full functional model here so uh, here only the block of uh, replica 1 replica 2 replica 3 all replica and update gradient and send to the parameter server uh, it will aggregate all and create a final uh, uh, final uh, and update the final gradient so this kind of the mo call uh, the model parameters yeah sorry model parallelism so this is called model parallelism now uh, uh, I'm especially here in this part one going to discuss about the concurrency in data parallelism training so uh, basically I'm discussing data parallelism because the most most of the time uh, we need we have large size of data and we have uh, and we have to do distributed training so most of the cases we, uh, most of the cases we found that we have to require data parallelism training here so in data parallelism training we have two way first like uh, what is the synchronous versus asynchronous distributed training and another like parameter distribution communication in the synchronous training so for example you choose synchronous training then how parameter distribution and communication will happen in the synchronous training if you do asynchronous distributed training then what you will do so first we need to understand what is asynchronous versus asynchronous distributed training then we will go to for the uh, parameter distribution and communication in the synchronous training so uh, the first we will discuss uh, uh, yeah so before that the sync uh, like synchronous synchronous training i want to tell you about the synchronous training so generally synchronous training uh, uh, used for especially um, uh, for, for example uh, all of the for example you you just set up the data and send to the data batch 1 batch 2 batch 2 batch 3 in per particular gpu worker then all of the worker 
uh, send the results after computing the gradient and in that parameter server will aggregate the results and update the model and then then that updated uh, model will broadcast to the other right so yeah so all of these things happened in the uh, uh, in synchronized way in synchronized way all of these things things these things happen and uh, parameter server strategy also so that parameter server strategy also here like all of results sending the particular so is also uh, centralized so this is also centralized so centralized scheme means all of the gpu results sent to the particular centralized parameter yeah we can say parameter server so that is called here especially this is the centralized scheme and parameter server strategy so this is called uh, uh, especially uh, uh, in synchronous training another uh, i would like to say uh, other like uh, especially this is also as a synchronous you can say this is also synchronous, synchronous training also but uh, it's really on the ring reduce to communicate the parameter update among the nodes so it's a, it's not a centralized it's you can say it's a decentralized schemes in decentralized schemes uh, you have to uh, uh, you have to split the data according to whatever we have gpu node gpu1 gpu2 gpu3 and how how the updated gradient we use here so this g for example gpu is compute its gradient so it's, it will send the gradient to its uh, successor gpu so its successor gpu its successor gpu use that gradient and update this gradient and send to next successor uh, uh, gpu and so so on continuously going on as a ring like so that's called all that, that's the reason it's called the ring all reduce structure so in the ring all reduce structure that's uh, that's why it's called a ring all reduce structure so it's looking like this thing so we discussed about uh, uh, like uh, how like decentralized scheme will, will work and how ring all reduce structure will work so this structure in synchronized way uh, will work for especially uh, it's not uh, like uh, wait for other uh, it's, it's not like wait for other so it, uh, that there is no need of the parameter server here so it's uh, it's uh, work well with our infrastructure or here here need the parameter server for aggregate all results but yeah it's depend on uh, uh, depend on the experiment so generally people use a centralized scheme because you have to more control here for example this you for example you able to miss this here then it's okay uh, you you leave this and uh, you can aggregate uh, other uh, results and broadcast model so generally uh, this scheme people use another like we discuss asynchronous distribution training in asynchronous distribution mix you no need to wait uh, for particular GPU so for example uh, you have GPU 1 GPU 2 and, and 200 300 number of the GPU is there if you do synchronize then for example sometime fail particular GPU or sometime whatever happened the synchronous if synchronous fail then that time fail that trend so that no they are not they, this in a synchronous way generally up for update the gradient we are that they are not waiting for that whatever result they are getting so parameter server will take the results and update and and broadcast it so that called an asynchronous distributed training so uh, this is all about it uh, uh, that model parallelism and type of uh, the parallelism and what is the distributed training here so next uh, uh, we will discuss part two about uh, uh, much more about uh, Harvard what is the Harvard for the deep learning tensor tensorflow harvard how to use it and yeah so next uh, part two tutorial we'll discuss it here so thanks uh any questions you have we can discuss yeah thank you